We have two bright regions giving us a show. One even fires the first long-duration flare of Solar Cycle 25. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week remains a bit on the quiet side, but at least the sun's giving us some decent eye candy to look at. As we take a look at our front side sun, you can see a bright region in the southern hemisphere. This is a new cycle sunspot. It's been given the name 2758, and on the 11th, it fires off a long duration flare. This is the first long duration flare we've seen from one of these new cycle sunspots, so it's good news. Now, granted, this didn't uh, last all that long, and it really wasn't a strong flare, so so it did not send us a solar storm and it did not cause any radio blackouts, but it's still pretty noteworthy. Now, as that region is rotated off of the sun's west limb, there's actually another region that began to rotate into Earth view uh, in the northern hemisphere. And this is also a solar cycle 25 bright region. Unfortunately, it fires off, looks like it launches a solar storm uh, on the sun's east limb and it has kind of died and fizzled since then. So we're not really getting all that much activity from it, but I'll show you some decent views from stereo. It is boosting the solar flux just a little bit. We are managing to stay within the marginal range for radio propagation. And along with uh, some pockets of fast solar wind from a remnant coronal hole that's rotated in through the Earth's strike zone, we are getting a little bit of boost in the space weather, but it's really not enough to bring Aurora down, except for some skosh times at high latitudes. And that's about it. And likely these conditions are going to continue here over the next few days. Switching to our M-Flare threat meter, for those of you who have been paying attention, you might have noticed a bit of a change when it comes to the X-ray data. This is because we have now switched as of March 10th. We've switched over from GOES-14 and 15 to GOES-16, which is the new spacecraft. And just in time, too, because on March 11th, right after we got out of the moon's eclipse, bam, you can see right there, that's that B-class flare, that long-duration flare. We caught the tip of it and then the tail as it began to decay. Okay. Now this is the region, region 2758, that is a new cycle sunspot, and that's the first long duration flare from one of these regions. So that is more good news that solar cycle 25 is coming very, very soon. Now we're still after that. We only had a few A-class flares from that region, and since then things have fizzled out a bit more. But luckily it looks like the uh, solar flux is going to remain in about the low 70s here over the next couple weeks, so we don't have to worry uh, about dipping back into poor radio propagation conditions on Earth's day side. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see over the past week or more, we've been kind of stumbling and bumbling along between quiet conditions to unsettled conditions and back again. The space weather's been pretty quiet, and that's mainly because we don't have any big coronal holes and no solar storms to speak of since we're at basically solar minimum. So we're just kind of waiting for things to happen. We're getting little pockets of fast solar wind. For a matter of fact, on the 13th, we did get a little bump up in activity and got a little bit of aurora show at high latitudes. Then we quieted back down and once again on the 16th we got a little bump up for a little bit and that's beginning to quiet down but we might still get another uh, bump up here and there over the next day or so as a little bit more fast wind kind of comes our way but it's really not all that strong. So aurora photographers at high latitudes you might get a little bit more show. Mid latitudes not much of a chance for you. The, the conditions are just too quiet and unfortunately it's going to continue to be like this e easily over the next week. And over the last few weeks, we've had some gorgeous aurora, especially at high latitudes, but a little bit down into mid latitudes. And since I haven't shared any aurora photos for so long, I wanted to share some of these gorgeous shots with you, like these from Norway. We had multiple uh, shots from Norway. And we had coronas in Finland. And the aurora was seen in Denmark. And as we move over the Atlantic, it was seen in multiple places in Iceland. And as we go to the Western Hemisphere, it was seen in many places in Canada. Here's in Yellowknife. And we've got multiple places in Alberta. It was also seen in Manitoba. 
And as we drop into the United States, it was seen, of course, in Alaska. But it also dropped down into Michigan for a short while. And believe it or not, it was also seen down south in New Zealand. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun pretty much from the side. And when you take a look at Stereo's view, you can see the two new cycle bright regions, one in the north and one in the south. The one in the southern hemisphere that's rotating to the sun's west limb from Stereo's view, that's region 2758. And as it disappears, you can kind of see it fire off that long duration flare, but not. there really wasn't a solar storm that was launched with it. Now, paying attention to the one in the north, you actually see it. It's been actually pretty flare active. It actually even fires off on the 15th. It fires off a big solar storm, well, relatively speaking, for these small bright regions. And then what happens? Ah, oh, it fizzles. Just as it was rotating into Earth view, it fizzles on us. So now we've gotten this very dim region that's rotating into Earth view. We don't really see much more activity coming out of it. And then after that, we're not seeing all that much in the way of active regions or anything. So it looks like things are going to continue to, to hover in the low end of marginal for radio propagation because we're not going to get any huge boost in the solar flux. And it also doesn't look like there's any big coronal holes that are going to be rotating rotating Earth view. So Aurora photographers, you're just going to have to keep dealing with those unsettled conditions and just Aurora at high latitudes. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon, with the new moon being on the 24th. So you night sky watchers, now is a perfect time to catch those dim objects in the sky. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are getting hit by some small pockets of fast solar wind from a remnant coronal hole that's moving in through the Earth's strike zone now. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 25% chance of a major storm, but likely this is a bit overblown. It's going to be sporadic at best, and then things will quiet down as we move into the weekend. At mid-latitudes, we're also expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 20% percent chance of active conditions but again this is probably overblown and sporadic at best so I wouldn't expect to be able to catch a show at mid latitudes and then things will begin to calm down a bit more as we move into the weekend and probably be pretty quiet. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is in the green when it comes to big solar flares. After having two new cycle uh, bright regions on the Earth-facing disk, one of them got rotated to the sun's far side and the other one fizzled, we're back to a spotless sun. So we have no risk for big uh, radio blackouts or anything like that. So you GPS users, you should be very happy. Your GPS reception on Earth's day side should remain top notch. However, we are managing to stay in the low 70s for solar flux, and this should make you amateur radio operators and emergency responders very happy. We are hugging the hairy edge of marginal for radio propagation on Earth's day side, and things will likely continue to stay that way. Now, we also, because we are in a solar minimum, we have a higher cosmic ray influx than we normally would have. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew, who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes. You are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is remaining a bit on the quiet side, but hey, we had our first long duration flare from a new cycle sunspot, and this is good news because it's telling us that that solar cycle 25 is getting that much closer to actually officially starting. Now, unfortunately, we only have some small pockets of fast solar wind from a remnant coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone. So your aurora photographers, unless you're at high latitudes, you're probably gonna have to sit this one out and just kind of deal with it and keep waiting because we don't really have any big coronal holes that look like they're going to be rotating into Earth view anytime soon. But this is good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. We're not getting all that much uh, when it comes to anything like radio blackouts from, from big solar flares, and we are managing to hover in the, the low 70s for solar flux, and some of these weak kind of disturbances actually help radio propagation on Earth's day side. So enjoy while you have it. Now, 
also you GPS users, you know, again, you guys also like these very weak, uh, the weak space weather because it helps stabilize that upper atmosphere for you. And uh, as long as you are staying away from the dawn dusk terminators and away from any aurora at high latitudes, your GPS reception should look pretty top notch. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.